Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us once again on Facebook Live. I have a very special guest, it's dear to my heart, because she is really uh, leading the way in uh, a lot of the information that is coming out on the vegan business side. So really excited to introduce Alyssa Alfano, she's the producer of the Plant-Based Business Hour, Managing Director of Veg Economist, and that is my personal favorite, Plant-Based and Vegan Business Magazine. Elizabeth is also an award-winning media personality, a successful businesswoman, and an investor. So she has lots of different perspectives and points of view to share. Elizabeth began her career working in Fortune 500 companies, later running her own international business. One of the most respected plant-based business experts in North America, Elizabeth speaks on the latest developments, uh, what's new in innovation, the analysis, and the business trends around the nation and on major media outlets. Welcome. Nice to have you. Uh, it's great to be here. Thanks. You know, it's a while since I've like, heard my own bio read back to me. So, <laughs> you know, because everyone's attention span is so short. So usually when I do these online things, people just say, oh, here's your name and let's get into it. And then I forgot like, oh, yeah, that's my bio. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to, for those not familiar with you or or, or just uh, interested in getting into the business world, I definitely want to share your background because you've got a wealth of experience and where you're coming from. So let's talk about that. So how did it all start for you? Definitely, um, you know, where did it begin? And then how did you make that transition into what you're doing today? Yes, uh, happy to talk about it. And again, thanks for having me here. So I am a firm believer that when you align your passion with your skill set, you have hit bingo. And I, once I shifted to a plant-based lifestyle, I wanted to use my skill set to meet my passions because that's the only way I really know how to move through life. Otherwise, if I'm not working on that, which I'm passionate about, every day is like lifting heavy furniture. So I wanted to make sure that I was aligning not just my purchasing power with my values, because I do that three times a day at the grocery store, of course, for every every time I eat. Uh, but I wanted to align all the time I'm spending with my values as well. So I went vegan. I mean, I've been long story. I won't get into it unless you want me to. I've been trying to go vegan my whole life. Uh, but I was actually successful uh, 2016, January of 2016. And once I made that switch, everything just followed. And I thought, okay, how can I use my skill set to really further this path that I'm so passionate about? And from there, the opportunities came through just sort of word to the wise that there is no way around the work. So I did have to work at moving the Titanic because I wasn't involved in plant-based business, obviously before I was plant-based. So I did have to do that work, but um, there are opportunities out there. So if you are thinking about making a shift for yourself and and spending all the time that you spend at work and you want to make sure that that time is spent um, aligning with your values, then um, there are opportunities out there for you for sure. And, and that's changed a lot. I think this is a Definitely much more. Look, I in 1985, when I became vegan, the, the jobs that were completely vegan were, were few and far between. Um, now there is a lot more, not only vegan businesses that are supporting and hiring other vegans, but opportunities for people, entrepreneurs or vegan entrepreneurs, like I like to call them, that um, can get into the space and really mm -hmm. develop and be successful. Uh, Obviously, you still need some business acumen. Um, you know, I do some consulting for uh, other vegan businesses to try to help them learn about proper marketing techniques, learn about proper pricing for the market strategies, developing a go to market strategy, all these things that are very important to set yourself up for success. You know, there are a lot of people out there with great ideas about products, but getting that product to market in a way that can be profitable and support a business to grow, that's a whole nother beast. And if, if you're thinking about getting into it, which I so encourage, because it's, it's one of the most rewarding experiences I've had is yes. to form Clean Machine and be in total alignment with my value system is to take on a consultant or get advice or read Veg Economist or get with some of these great people with insights who could help coach you and guide you through into a successful process. Now, I know you've, on your own show, show Plant-Based Business Hour, you've had some conversations with some pretty amazing folks. 
both from the investing perspective to the business side to the innovators and products all the way through what are some of the you know amazing conversations that you've had that you can share with us oh gosh so many amazing conversations i think of um Sadra Shadel, who's the co-founder of No Evil Foods, and she talks about how she'd been vegan for a while and she was doing her own cooking. And so from her kitchen with $5,000 in her pocket, she and her husband started No Evil Foods. And you think of that iconic branding that they have with their packaging, so smart, and they've been so true to their values and their way of life. You know, their branding really reflects who they are as people, um, how they wanted to be informative and yet fun and creative creative and they are all of those things, she and her husband together. So um, I, I love that. I love, I've, I've interviewed Beyond Meat so many times. So Ethan Brown has, Ethan Brown launched the Beyond Meat sausages in my kitchen. I mean, I've had him, I've interviewed him for NPR and then I've had wow. Chuck Muth on the show, Plant-Based Business Hours, the chief growth officer for Beyond Meat. So of course, I always love to hear about these big brands that have sort of passed over to the other side, if you will. And uh, they're really affecting on a global scale. So I love to hear about what Beyond Meat is doing in China and its mm -hmm. co-manufacturing plants in Europe and how it's meeting the Chinese where the Chinese are. It's not trying to put American tastes into a Chinese menu. They're really working with what they've got there um, and the great strides that they're making. So of course, these big iconic brands are, are wonderful. But I also love... A, this conversation really stayed with me. Califia, uh, the plant-based milks. I talked yeah. to Greg Stelton Pohl and he just has such, you talk about matching heart and soul with business. And he really encompasses that for me um, in that his life mission is to sort of get us all on a healthier plane uh, for the planet, for the animals, for people. So he is you know, has this bird's eye view because he's one of those big brands. So he can talk to you about, um, and this is one of the things I like to do. And it's one of the things I consult with people a lot about the overarching trends of where are we going and how are we getting there and how can the smaller brands fit into these overarching trends. So I loved my conversation with Greg. He really is so fabulous. But then I love to talk to cellular agriculture. So mm -hmm. I love to hear from Blue Nalu. That was one of my favorite interviews as well. Lou Cooperhouse, who's the uh, CEO there. He, you know, just just thinking, I don't know where you are, Joff, on the cellular agriculture scale, but I'm for it. And uh, just thinking that we might shift in, say, give or take 10 years time to um, not using land and animals to actually create our food en masse. I think it's very inspirational. I do. And and obviously, uh, for me personally, I'd like to see more of that shift go to an actual plant-based because uh, eating animal products, as we know, people like Dr. Greger and many of the uh, plant-based doctors out there are showing what the consumption of animal products is. But if we can take the animal suffering out of the equation, I'm still going to applaud that effect uh, for the animal's sake, for the environment's sake. And, and look, if that change is going to take a long time, let's at least make uh, do the least harm, right? Do the and, least harm, and, yes. And, but uh, ideally, I'd like to see us, uh, obviously, for our own personal health, since that's my main focus in health and fitness, clearly plants are, are the way to go for the things we're seeing in the microbiome space showing the impact that consuming animal products has on our microbiome as opposed to what the microbiome technically feeds on, which is plant-based matter, right? Fiber, polyphenols, um, oligosaccharides. These are things only found in plants and that's what our probiotics eat. So it just, you know, just looking at the microbiome alone, we're seeing well, it's pretty clear what we should be putting in the tank. <laughs> sure, 100%. Um, and, you know, it's always plants first, right? Plants right. first. Um, but as I look to sort of meet people where they are, I think these kind of innovations are groundbreaking. I also think you're going to see a lot, not just from cellular agriculture or um, cultivated meat, but from fermentation. So microbes, yeah. which is neither plant nor animal. I'm so excited about this, the kind of protein you can get from algae. I mean, just, yeah. and of course, algae has been around since, you know, the dawn of time. But what they're able to do now with fermentation techniques to yeah. grow this on mass. I think this is so very exciting. And um, you're only going to see innovation get 
better and better. So I think, you know, cellular meat so much still has yet to be determined. It really is a solid five to 10 years, really kind of 10 years out before we're going to see um, real products there on the market. So a lot can be changed there. Um, you know, we can have a discussion about labs and food and all that. But um, ultimately, I think what we're going to see in these large trends is that the whole system is going to change. So yeah. it's not just that we may or may not have cellular, we can even leave that conversation off the table. But as you look to no longer doing monocrop farming, yeah. so that you can have more varied plants so that the soil regenerates so that you start getting some of those minerals from the soil that we no longer get in our foods. You're talking about different ways of farming. When you talk about different ways of farming, you're talking about different ways of banking because a lot of those systems rely on banks for loans. And I mean, you are really looking at an overhaul of the whole system and it is such an exciting time. And there are so many areas. I don't want to be so macro that we can't talk about things that are helpful for these people listening here today. There are so many ways to find yourself being perfect purposeful as we change to a more ethical, compassionate, healthier system for us people and the planet and animals. Well, and that's another thing too. I, you know, when you look at um, the shift in the finance uh, sector, especially, I mean, we're talking over a billion dollars in investments just this year so far in, in plant-based businesses. Yes, it's mostly focused in plant-based proteins, but it's a start and you know that's only going to have a trickle down effect when you're looking at the top 11 cpg companies in the in the food and ag business all making concerted shifts bringing on and assigning entire teams for development research and development launching their own private label things you're seeing this in fast food you're seeing it in uh, product development at the top food companies in the world i mean this is just phenomenal. Yeah. It's but such an exciting time to be alive because in our lifetime, our whole food system is going to be different. And I really oh, think you oh. will see by 2050 that meat is not the majority of what people eat. I agree. And we're already seeing a precursor of that with dairy. I think dairy has been hit yes. the hardest and the fastest. Its downfall has been staggering. Well, dairy has a tailwind because when you look at the statistics, first of all, let me give you a statistic to, to riff off of what you were saying before, then I'll come back to dairy. Yes, just in the first quarter of 2020 alone, you are seeing more investment dollars into plant-based businesses than all of 2019. So we can thank Beyond Meat for that wonderful IPO that just got so much press and has so much outside money, not all of it coming from vegans and vegetarians, so much outside money pouring into plant-based innovation and plant-based products. So it's a very exciting exciting time for investors and also for small business people. Um, but then, um, oh, shoot, what was that next thing I was going to say? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got off I, so many great statistics. I got off track. Um, yeah. It's a very exciting time. It is. But not only, oh, we we're talking about dairy and how fa uh, yes. fast that is right. falling. So dairy yeah. has a tailwind because 65% of Americans are lactose intolerant, and that's right. much higher in Asian American communities and African American communities. Yep. So a lot of people just feel bad when they uh, – Eat, drink dairy. Um, so milk, which is 14% of the category and over 40% of all the dollars spent in the plant-based arena are on plant-based milks. I mean, they really are a category leader. And because of it, you know, dairy, which uh, milk and, and yogurt dairy farms uh, survive on such small margins and a lot of it's subsidized that you are seeing dairy farms either switch or go out of business and you're seeing plant-based milks um you know starting with things like ripple and calafia but then also this oat milk craze you're seeing them really capture that market and people are in you know, a very mainstream now you go into starbucks and you have yep. your almond milk yep. your soy milk you know all your choices very mainstream now and so i think that's just as you say a precursor to what's going to happen with plant-based meats Yes, and, and we're seeing it in almost every single category. What Good Catch, I, I had uh, uh, the chef from Good Catch, my good friend Pete Cervoni on, and seeing, so we're seeing it in the fish categories, we're seeing it in the meat categories, we're seeing it in all the categories across the, the egg categories exploding with yes. Just Egg and some of the other uh, innovations in the egg category, which is amazing to me because, you know, these were the bread and butter uh, staples for most homes. And to see that shift happening so fast, mm -hmm. you know, 
it was funny when when I was young and uh, I was a peace activist, right? And and uh, uh, during the 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 whole uh, Russian period where we were at uh, in an arms race, and it was a very frightening time, especially with the Cold War going on, everybody thinking that we could just get obliterated. And you know, I was out there being a peace activist, and and uh, somebody said, you know, oh, that's not going to do anything. Why are you wasting your time? And I said, you know, it's not the outcome you have to start somewhere every movement every change starts somewhere i'd rather be a part of the start than someone sitting on the sideline waiting for it to happen to me, that's just a much more rewarding experience <laughs> yes and i also take issue with that comment like it's not going to change anything i actually think people are wildly powerful they actually do make a difference. And w again, we talked about this in the beginning, when you align your purchasing power and how you spend your time with your values, you really will see a shift. I mean, the millennials really exemplify that for us because they are talking the talk, but also walking the walk. And you are seeing a, a difference happen. It's like a domino effect. It's happening so quickly at a rate before never, uh, as we've seen in history. So I take issue with that, that that we can't make a difference. I really think we can, and thank you for those peace efforts, by the way. But uh, uh, yeah, no, I, I think people are very powerful. And I think also we are living in turbulent times. And yeah. whether you are on the left or on the right, I think everyone's disgusted with politics, no matter where yeah. you fall on the line. And I think people are realizing that they need to make the best decisions they can for themselves. Right. And when they do that, they think about their health and the health of their family, which leads them yeah. to think about the health of the planet. And then it grows from there. So I think people are taking back their power and they're taking back their health. And right. uh, I think it's a very empowering time for people. I, I do. And this movement is empowering. You know, when I hear the phrase, oh, what are you giving up? And I'm like, I'm not giving up anything. I'm gaining by doing this. I'm gaining more life. I'm gaining more health. I'm gaining more love in what I'm doing and more passion in what I'm doing. I mean, it, it's, it's not giving up of something. It's like if, if you're consuming something that's killing you, stop doing it doesn't mean giving up. <laughs> well, so it's funny. I'll tell you when I started in 2016, and again, I had been trying to be vegan since I was a child. Um, when I started in 2016, I used to get comments like, oh, you tree hugger and all this kind of stuff. I don't get those comments anymore. So when someone does say something to me like, oh, think about what you're giving up or like, uh, oh, bacon. Right. I just say like, dude, get with the program because if you, if you, because all the facts are out there and everybody knows now. So if you still think that this is some fringe main thing, fringe thing, all that is, is a reflection on how behind the times you are. So dude, just get with the program and otherwise, you know, peace out, enjoy your colorectal cancer. But I, you know, like we're all moving on and we all get it and we're doing what's better for ourselves, you know, get with that program or don't. Well, and I think that is why it's not a fad and why it's actually a real movement that continues to snowball in its size and growth and speed. It's because more and more, more and more people all the way up the spectrum, no matter if you're a suit wearing $100 million a year income earning person, all the way down to the, to the person who is a tree hugger out there, everyone in the middle can get this. It's pretty simple. <laughs> so, okay, shout out to the tree huggers, by the way. But um, I will say, because I do want to give props to all my friends who are on a street corner with a sign, oh, how I love them. But what we're really seeing here back to business is it isn't the vegans and the vegetarians. It's really the the meat eaters who want healthier options, those flexitarians, and it is the corporate dollars behind us. So let's go through some of the numbers. If we're going from 7 billion people to 10 billion on the yeah. billion people on the planet, but you're not getting more land and you're not getting more water. How are you going to feed 50% more people on the planet? Just a little bit of a review of how um, meat and dairy function. So we have trees, the trees suck out carbon right. from the air, but instead we cut down these trees and we grow grains. Do we give these grains to people? Grains that have fiber, grains that have protein? No, we give them to animals and then tick tock, tick tock, we wait. Oh, we give the animals water, we give them land, we give them more grain, we cut down more trees. Still don't have any meat yet, still waiting very inefficient we could yeah. just give those grains with protein and fiber directly to people you'd cut down a lot less trees so if you take that example and just very quickly from the world resources institute it takes about nine calories 
to make chicken for every one calorie you get back because you're giving the chicken grain and time and land. And so, you know, it's just more efficient to take the one calorie of grain and give it to people. But and much worse for cows. It's something like 35 to one. So no business person would say, hey, here's 350. Just give me a dime back. So <laughs> these are very inefficient <laughs> business equations. And no, as a, no, as a corporation, you're looking, particularly as the world goes from 7 billion to 10 billion, you're looking to be more efficient with your resources like yeah. time, water, land, and yeah. ultimately meat and dairy are bad business equations. So you're seeing corporations, you were talking about um, more innovation coming, you're seeing things like JBS, and we can have an ethical decision conversation about JBS maybe another time, but you're, think, you're seeing, you know, maple leaf foods out of Canada, huge meat producer, JBS out of Brazil, largest meat producer in the world. They are um, starting plant-based brands. They have plant-based innovation centers. They're spending a lot of money on R&D because they know even a back of the napkin kind of math will tell you, you this uh, mathematical equation for making meat and dairy just isn't sustainable. No, it's not. So it's, the, it's the not driver is to make more money. On an environmental level, it's not sustainable on a resources level, and it's not sustainable financially either. Correct. And, and look, no business succeeds by killing off its customers. Right. right as well. <laughs> and if they're dying at an early age, uh, doesn't it make more sense if they're sticking around longer, they buy your products more often, especially Enter, if you work so hard to acquire those customers? Enter Big Pharma, which is also another right. conversation. You know, a lot of people say, oh, Elizabeth, but you know, it's it's not true that these things are making us sick. We're living longer. And I say, you are not living longer. You are dying longer because you're starting <laughs> pills in the fifties. And you know, by the way, pills and the life of doctors, super, super expensive, not to mention, of course, inconvenient. And you know, you can't play soccer like you used to all this kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, it's, so uh, we're living longer, but no one's enjoying those extra decades. Even even on a tax basis, we look at our deficit swelling to over $20 trillion right now. We're edging closer and closer to unsustainable where we're not even generating enough income to pay the interest on the debt, which is just obscene and absurd. We're getting into numbers that are just, just, off, just unfathomable for the typical human being. And what is causing that? Half of our tax base goes to health care. Why right. is that? Because we have a sick nation. Why do we have a sick nation? Up to 90% of the disease states are caused by our diet. It's not sustainable on any level. I mean, even to our tax base and government structure, it's not sustainable. Yes, and, and this makes it so frustrating <laughs> because you're saying to yourself, you know, why are my taxes going to pay for you know, so much of, of meat and dairy is subsidized. So you think right. my taxes are going to make people sick and then I my taxes go again to take care of the sickness that we just exactly. made. It's so backwards thinking and so darn frustrating and, and really uh, benefits the very, very few. So again, as we talk about taking back our power and yeah. using our voice, you don't have to stand on a, on a corner with a sign. You use your voice three times a day every time you put your dollars to where your values align at the grocery store. So just, just taking like three seconds more to to like move your fingers over and find that choice that aligns with your environmental values, yeah. with your, you know, vegan values, compassion values, your own health values. And you will start seeing, cause everyone's following your dollars. So you will start seeing a shift. So in that shift, that means there is more opportunity, especially for explosive growth, but there's more breadth and opportunity to allow more players in the market. Remember, this is a, still a very small, but fastly growing a marketplace. So that opens the doors for a lot of e-entrepreneurs, a lot of new people yes. who have made the switch to uh, a compassionate lifestyle and saying, okay, now I'm working in a job that I'm creating or producing products that don't align with me at all. Mm -hmm. But I've spent the last 20 years doing this. Now that I'm vegan, I feel like I'm in the wrong space. How does someone begin to make that shift to that space and, and properly align their passions, their goals, their vision for life, their new way of thinking of life in a way that they can support their family, support their life, 
and even be successful in, in the mm-hmm. marketplace. I have so much to say about this. I'm so glad you're asking me. And I, I see as the clock is ticking down, I think this is a half an hour show. So if we don't get into it all, I do want to say everyone can reach out to me at Elizabeth at ElizabethAlfano.com. I'm happy to work with you to sort of make this shift. But I do want to say hats off to all the entrepreneurs. Oh, how I love you. And you are statistically 70% of the new jobs created come from small businesses. So I do love you. But not everyone is cut out to be an entrepreneur. And it is 24 seven, 60 hours a week. It has to be passion on steroids. So if you find yourself wanting to shift into this arena, but maybe you aren't at a place right now, maybe you have kids in the third grade, you know, maybe you think like, oh, now's not the time for me to shift over to be an entrepreneur, which does take a certain kind of personality type. Uh, I would encourage people and here you do so much good. I would encourage you to look at the business you're already in. Let's say you're working at a corporation and they're making these products and you're thinking, oh gosh, how's this really aligning with my values? Mm -hmm. Take a look at where you are rather than reinventing the wheel. Take a look at where you are and think, how could I help this corporation shift a little bit? That might mean helping them make new products that are sustainable or vegan. That might you know, mean introducing them to me or, or Joff and you know, together we help them re-strategize some new brand options. That could be talking to the people at the cafeteria and saying, hey, again, Joff and I could come in or I know other people or you know, maybe you feel comfortable doing it yourself. I do a lot of cooking. I do a lot of uh, menu strategy, menu development for people. How can we make the cafeteria more vegan friendly? You don't have to give up your entire life. That is often a huge decision for people. They say that the three most stressful stressful decisions are moving, getting a divorce, and switching jobs. So if you don't feel like taking on something that monumental right now, just look at where you are. Because if you could help your corporation shift, I think you would also show yourself as a star in the corporation for being forward thinking, for getting them new business, for getting them um, just on the um, ESG program, I'll say. Uh, But also you could carve out a new position potentially for yourself there. So I'm happy to work with people where they are and help them find opportunities. I, I got so many more questions. I want to be respectful for your time. I'm okay with lo- running longer if you are. Just let me know. <laughs> okay. It's a tricky day today, but yes, I want to do it. <laughs> okay. Because I think this is such an important topic. This is where we can, because look, I, I started my own business and bootstrapped it with very little money, one other business partner, and we just said, let's try to make it happen. Started out with one product and built up to a real brand that's now starting to take off. So Yes, it was a lot of hard work. I did consulting on the side and took zero salary for four years. Four it's years. Business. Yes. yes. Just putting it all back into letting the money just keep growing the company. And that got me to that place where now I can take a full salary. I can, you know, my wife and I could work and, and, it, and it works. But it does take some forward thinking. Getting advice from people or consultants or even friends in the business, say you're looking at a specific sector of business, say like frozen foods, find somebody or people, go to LinkedIn, go to use the business resources, go to like, um, oh God, what's her name from uh, Vegan Main Street? Um, Great resource there. Uh, Stephanie, Um, Stephanie, I had her on the show. She's brilliant at that. Getting, just getting connected and getting aligned with somebody who shares your vision and let let them run together with that or get your OJT. And that's what I did. I spent 30 years in the in the natural products business uh, <laughs> working yeah. for other companies. I worked in distribution. I worked in retail. I worked in, in uh, on the branded side. I worked in product development. I worked at the executive level. So I gained a lot of that experience and perspective, saw a lot of what was good, a lot of what was bad, a lot of what I liked, a lot of what I didn't like, mm-hmm. and applied that to the business. But if you don't have that OJT or you don't have that experience, maybe a great idea or want to shift, partner with somebody, either consulting or something. So your take on on that in making some transitional choices like that. 
Yes. I mean, I almost call it um, informational interviews. I mean, and that is different than what you're talking about. You're talking about, you know, there are great Facebook groups out there. There are, there's a huge community around veganism and it's usually very open and friendly and the plant-based world likes to see innovation and new ideas and it tends to reward that kind of talent because it is, uh, you know, a, a vegan army that we're looking for ultimately because it's a big job that we're doing to take over the $1.4 trillion meat industry. So, <laughs> Yeah. Um, there's there's a lot of opportunity and there's a lot of work to be done. But again, if you don't want to bite off too much, um, just like Jeff's saying, look for those resources that can help you. But even resources, you know, sometimes cost money, et cetera. So you can do things like these Facebook groups and just start surrounding yourself with people who have shared vision as you, because you don't have to decide in a day, as you kind of map out for yourself how you want your life to shift. And you might find that you're shifting in place and just, you know, um, carving out a different kind of position for yourself in the company that you're in, or you might be that entrepreneur that wants to, you know, up, up, heave it all and start something new. So I love that you're talking about um, these kind of uh, support groups, but also try to get yourself informational interviews with people that you admire, you see what path they're on, you see what they're doing. Everyone's time is tight. I'm finding that vegans yeah. worked harder than anybody else. So it's, you know, they're all so thin, but even um, small LinkedIn conversations, people are willing to share with you tips and tricks and resources. And this can also get you thinking. I mean, it kind of depends on where you are. If you are thinking to yourself, oh, I'd like to shift, but I have no idea what, then you need to do some of this informational interviewing, soul searching, etc. But if you are already thinking, I have a product and I want to launch it, then you're looking at the next level of resources to get yourself out there. And uh, there's no better time than now, for sure. Yes. And, and with that kind of uh, growth, there's going to come competition, obviously, too. So yes. you have to be aware. So I, I was like working with someone who's like, oh, you know, here's this product and it's great. And here's all the things and why it's going to sell and stuff like that. And it's $14 a, a unit. And it's what I'm going to sell it at. And uh, and I said, oh, have you done your competitive analysis to see what the right. other products in that space are? And we looked and it was about seven to eight dollars for almost all of the other players. And I said, so you're twice as much. That means the vast majority of people aren't going to see the value in that. Do you see how you've misaligned your passion with what the market can bear? So I was teaching them to work backwards from what the market can bear. There, look, there's always a window of opportunity for doing something completely different than nobody else is doing. And you can carve out a market space there. But that is one in a million. Um, most people need to find what the market is prepared to, what consumers are already prepared for, and then try to do your best to fit that within the pricing structure and working backwards from the pricing. You know, work to, okay, this is what they're going to pay, then this is what I'm going to need, but this is what the retailer is going to take, and this is what the cost of the product is, and all of that needs to be thought through. So there is a lot more to it than, hey, I'm going to create a product and it's going to sell. <laughs> it's not exactly how it 100%. So let me just reiterate that the basic principles of business apply. <laughs> so no, just exactly. because it's vegan doesn't mean like you don't have to follow regular business principles. So yes, right. and if business is not your thing, reach out to me, reach out to Joff, what, or, you know, get some books from the library, get some books online, um, yes. but do your homework about some basic business principles. And again, somebody like Joff or I could walk you through that once you have a plan or an idea or how to get to market. There are different stages. You might be in market, but you want your media strategy uh, worked on and honed in on. I do a lot of that for people. Or you might just be in the very beginning stages, sitting on your couch in the living room thinking, I have to change my life. So there's lots of different stages to where you want to be. But uh, the business... Uh, uh, acumen still does apply. And one of the reasons that you're seeing Califia, Beyond Meat, No Evil, and not just the biggies, by the way, if you um, read Veg Economist, and um, as you were kindly saying in the beginning, I'm the consulting managing director for North America. Of course, Peter Link is founder, and he handles all of Europe um, for Veg Economist, a fantastic magazine. Go, you know, if you're talking about business resources, you of course want to go to vegconomist.com. But as you're seeing in Veg Economist, it isn't just the biggies, you know, it isn't right. just impossible food that's getting $1.5 billion investment as, as of now. So they've had so many rounds of funding, they've reached 1.5 billion, but you're seeing small startups that a year ago, yeah. um, Nutco, for example, just to get, you know, $85 million in funding. So um, that is another 
thing to think about. And I help people do their pitch deck for investors. If you're thinking you want to take on investment dollars, some people fund it themselves. Some people take on investment dollars. It is a competitive landscape out there. It's a wonderful time, but you do have to cross your T's and dot your I's. Indeed. And that's where that the professional ethic. But so let's dig down. I uh, want to touch base on this real quick because we're not only seeing a shift in the financial end and the availability and the innovation of products like solar foods, like you were talking about, and bacterial fer- fermentation um, that is creating protein basically almost what they call out of thin air. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, right. Yes. Uh, so fun to watch that taking, transpire. Take, uh, you know, sequestering CO2, which is the, the backbone of, of an amino acid and protein yeah, and, so and using fermentation to, to turn what's a waste product to, you know, damaging to the environment into usable protein is a phenomenal thing. So looking forward to talking about more of that in 21 and, uh, and beyond, but, um, but the infrastructure of business is starting to change too. At least I am seeing it where, we're looking at people uh, and businesses and corporations and investors saying, wait a minute, there's a compassionate element to this. Mm. There's a health element to this that is aligning with people, that is attractive to people. So there's a big PR piece here that is attractive. We're saying something that's good for the environment. That's greenwashing has almost become popular because they're so the businesses, the big corporations, the, the people with money are seeing The consumers want this. It's more the dog wagging the tail now, finally. The consumers are more driving the the decision-making of the producers. It used to be all through the 50s, 60s, 80s, 90s that the big corporations were telling us what we should be eating. Is it more colorful? Is it more flavorful? Is it more, you know, using all the artificials to just to make it more col- prettier and, and taste better and everything like And now the consumers are saying, I don't want all that chemical crap. I don't want anything that hurts nature. I don't want anything that hurts animals. We are telling them what to produce. And that's such an amazing shift in our fundamental business structure and that's global. Yes. Yes. I'm going back to, don't forget you have the powers. Everyone is chasing your dollars and where you spend your dollars really does matter because that's where corporations are going to go. Going to go. They're going to go towards your dollars. And it's true that it's a bit of uh, greenwashing now. So there are some bad characters that are using these terms like certified humane when they are not, please. If I can get that across here, there is no such thing as certified humane. And those, labels really mean nothing. It just means you've paid for that label, but it really means nothing more than that. Um, So yes, those elements are out there. But ultimately, I think what you're seeing, and this is why it is such a great time to be alive, because not only are we going to see the change in our food system in our lifetime, but we're seeing that the consumer and the corporate entity is realizing that the compassionate choice or the choice that causes the least amount of harm is also the best business choice and the most efficient choice. The most efficient choice with our money, with our time, with our resources for our planet, for our health, for the animals. When has that ever aligned before? So it's just almost like a fairy dust kind of time. Um, And we are turning the Titanic because we are the ones who are deciding with our purchasing power. So it is Um, And corporations are being held to higher standards, I think, than they used to be. So um, it, it, and it, it all, you know, I don't want to take the conversation to politics really, because that's like a seven hour conversation, but it really is a food war. That's what I see. Innovation Mm -hmm. is going to become an area of national security, because as we go from 7 billion people to 10 billion people, it's going to be those who can make the most food at a reasonable cost and quick expenditure, you know, quick growth process. So that's going to become uh, an, an issue for national security. So I think if if I were the American uh, governmental system, I would be investing deep in plant-based and deep in cellular agriculture because you want to be out in front of that technological uh, curve. So, you know, I go off on a tangent, but it's a very interesting time to be alive. And we are seeing that with huge investments from China, uh, 
uh, specifically in Beyond Meat now, helping them build the, their new plants in China. We're seeing it in Canada with their government directly investing in plant-based. So, so here's the thing. You're seeing it in Canada. You're not seeing it in the United States. When you right. see uh, Beyond Meat investing in um, co-manufacturing relationships in China, that's right. private investment. I'm talking about American government investment. I would yeah. be, just how we invest in the military, I would be yeah. spending your dollars out investing in food, food oh. innovation, food research, food, um, f- new farming techniques, vertical farming. Because um, one thing we haven't talked about, again, we could, we, Jeff, you and I could be here for for a very long time. Uh, <laughs> you know, when you start shifting the food that you make, you need to shift the machinery that you use. That's part of the problem for plant-based items. There's much more demand for plant-based than is actually being supplied because plant-based companies are having a problem scaling up. So if you are an entrepreneur and you are listening to this and you're looking for how to be purposeful and you are also an engineer where the quote unquote movement needs you more than ever is helping in creating machinery that will allow for co-packing relationships to exist. There aren't enough co-packing manufacturing uh, uh entities, businesses, buildings that exist for plant-based products because it requires different machinery and and there's just not enough of these contract manufacturers out there for us with the right machinery. So that means we can't scale up, which means you're seeing things like plant-based items are in Brooklyn and San Francisco and Los Angeles. Well, what the heck does that do? We want it in Minnesota and we want it in North Dakota and we want it in Alabama. So you want global distribution and certainly distribution across the United States. We need scaling up. So I'm I'm talking about so many things all at once, but um, <laughs> yeah, no, and there's so many pieces of this puzzle. Like yes. you know, when the uh, tech boom started, there were people that were doing the infrastructure. There were people doing the chips. There were people doing the right. on ramps. You know, Google and Yahoo, and then you Intel on the chip side. And so there's so many different aspects along the supply chain that you can get involved with, yes. whether it's producing the raw materials or producing, uh, you know being a vegan graphic artist can to support other vegan businesses with the marketing because digital marketing has become such a huge part of this business and you look at traditional um marketers they don't understand the new consumer the Mm. the green consumer the millennial consumer who wants these compassionate products and wants them to be talked to in plain simple straightforward honest way this is just not the old marketing style. So yes. being those new elements to every single piece of the pie is important. Which is why I say you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Think of where you are right now and yeah. do a small pivot. You don't have to become an entrepreneur or you know think, oh gosh, and now I have to go back to school to become an engineer. Just think of where you are right now. If you're a graphic designer, if you're in marketing, if you're in advertising, if you are an engineer and you're, you know, making supplies, food supplies, you know, you can easily start shifting to supply plant-based companies or, you know, if you are in management, you can shift to, you know, perhaps implement new management strategies in your company to make your company where you currently work more veg forward. So there's lots that you can do right now in place with the skill set that you have. Well, and and let's talk about the psychology changing within the business structure to the the business world because what I see is when you have a consumer that just wants best price best tasting, then it's all about marketing and the mindset within the corporations is all about how do you just make it taste good and how do you make it cheaper right that is shifted to how do we make it healthier how do we make it greener and how do we make it more positive for people and their experience with that. You can't because you adopt the mindset of your consumer to be successful. Sure. You have sure. to to be yes. successful. Yes, you if you're not meeting them the where they are, then yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So how has the how I know you've talked to executives and people within the business structure in these businesses. How has how have you seen this structure changing to a more heart centered workplace that needs to be aligned with the consumers that is growing in this field. Are you saying heart centered in as in compassion or as in heart health? Well, I a little both, uh, but yeah. no, the, the more the mindset shifting, inclusiveness, uh, collaboration, cooperation, progressive mindset, things that more align with the consumer and the consumer's needs, thinking of how does this product inve- uh, impact our environment, not just now, but long-term. What are we doing on top of 
you know, like I'm, we're working on making changes to uh, make all of our packaging 100% uh, post-consumer recycled waste. So we're not adding any new plastic to the system at all. And if you recycle, there's no new plastic going into dumps, into, you know, oceans or anything at all, which would be, a, you know, a big step forward. Mm. So, you know, how are other companies taking on this mindset and how is it shifting the entire business structures in, in your experience in talking to some people? So definitely the environment is first and foremost. Mm. Um, I'm seeing that as really something that corporations want to be mindful of their own resources so they don't want to be wasteful there and it's also a great messaging to the consumer because the consumer does care about that and uh, ultimately corporations do as well so i'm seeing that as front and foremost and then it kind of depends on the product some products are more health focused and some products are more i mean everybody wants to be taste focused and convenience focused and price focused you do have to have all those three things but right. some are more meeting people where they are we do live in a fast food nation and you know are, are we going to take on how we eat in addition to what we eat, it's it's those are two major things at once. So not everyone is interested in saying we can't have fast food anymore. They're just interested in meeting the consumer where they are because they're trying to get them on the right path. So uh, Impossible Foods, I had a wonderful conversation with Rachel Conrad. I highly recommend this on the Plant-Based Business Hour to listen to this, um, the interview that I had with her. But she was saying in double-blinded studies, Given the opportunity, assuming the taste was there, the majority of people chose a plant-based option. So I think a lot of companies are trying to meet consumers where they are. They're not trying to tell them, hey, you need to eat healthier and you need to um, you know, stop going to fast food places. Um, so I think they're just trying to say, hey, let's focus on getting the animals out of the burger because ultimately that is healthier. Now you and I would not say that a Beyond Meat burger is a healthy option where, you know, obviously we it's not a, a, a carrot. I think you can see right. that, right? You look at it, right. you go, that's not a head of lettuce. Okay, so we can see that it is a processed product, but a plant-based burger is not only gonna be better for the environment, but it's not going to have hormones. It's not going to have antibiotics. It's not going to have cholesterol. It's gonna be the same on fat, salt, calories, protein, uh, and it, isn't going to have trimethylene and oxide, which is not, you know, an animal heme. So these things are bad for us, animal heme, trimethylene and oxide, cholesterol. It's gonna have a little bit of fiber, which meat's gonna have none of that, you know, no antibiotics nor hormones. So these things are a step in the right direction. Health right. food, not really. But for somebody who lives on fast food every other day, every day, this is a step in the right direction for them for sure. So much good stuff. And, um, <laughs> and so I, just, I just wanted to summarize and say, so yeah, I'm going yeah. to to say, you really have to know your customer. Yeah. So uh, everyone's interested in the environment. Some, a lot of people are interested in getting healthier, but some people are just more focused on, I got to eat something fast. And if you can make the price and the taste about the same, I'll go for an animal product. And a lot of products are just doing that for their customers. And it does help. Yes, it does. It does. I, I, I would love to have you back because you're such a wealth of information. I feel such resonance with you on so many different topics and there's so much to explore. This, this whole field is exploding right now. And um, what a time. thankful that there are uh, leaders within many of these different sectors and up and comers, innovators that are really going to be the new leaders in the next five to 10 years. It's really exciting time. Um, so thank you for all you do. I want to uh, make sure that you get a clear out there. We'll put it in the uh, comment section too, but plant-based uh, uh, business hour, as well as veg economist. Guys, if you're interested in learning about um, what's going on in the vegan community on the business side, Veg Economist is my favorite magazine. It is 100%. such a wealth of information. Yeah. They put together, a, 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 they consolidate a lot of the top news sources and bring it from lots of different areas. So as you can go to one source and get a lot of great information instead of searching for it all over the web or waiting for it, for it to pop up on social media. <laughs> So yeah, so we, I'll, I'll just say yeah. vegconomist.com for Vegconomist. sure. <laughs> and, per, then, uh, and you can sign up and get regular emails like I do from them so that you can get that regular feed in your uh, emails and, um, and, and hear about the latest and greatest. And, and this is such a great thing. She's talked wonderfully about empowerment. So important to me. I'm all about empowerment. Um, it is empowering, but you need to feed yourself. There's a lot of negativity going on right now, um, especially in 2020. 
a lot of things that are happening, a lot of things beyond control too, but we need to surround ourselves with information that empowers us, that gets us excited and happy and looking forward to a future, a better future. So get some of that positive information that supports, hey, it is really growing. Hey, we are really making a change. We are making a difference because that supports you and your day-to-day -day efforts. Um, so yes. Yes, I agree. <laughs> you have to feed your soul as well yes. as your tummy. So I I love what you're saying. And um, I, I will also do a shout out for those people who are just starting to think about, hey, I might be switching up my life. Or if you do want to hear from these true movers and shakers who are creating a future of food as we look towards a secure and safe food supply, who are the leaders who are really taking us there? Then you do want to go to the plant-based business hour and you can get that at elizabethalfano.com slash PBH. But I've talked to everybody, Impossible Foods Beyond Meat, even Eric Adams, president, Brooklyn Bureau president uh, in New York, he switched over to a plant based diet and what he's doing in New York to take everybody to Meatless Monday and make all the hospitals um, have a veg default veg programs. And so I've, I've interviewed all the leaders and they really are creating a path for the future. And Elizabeth has done such a variety of topics with a variety of people. So no matter, matter what you're interested, in, she's probably had a guest that will resonate with you and your interest topic. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Well, Jeff, thank you for all you do. Thank you for having me on and thank you for all you do. And I'm happy to come back anytime. We have lots to talk about you and me. So I think we can pick Indeed. this up again. Yeah. Indeed. Thank you so much for coming on and thank you for all that you're doing and supporting uh, the business community and the vegan business plant-based uh, community. And look, this is, I want to, for those of you who are not yet plant-based or, or not even considering it, you know, this is inclusive. We uh, are, uh, the reason I do this is to try to contribute to the betterment of the planet, the, the people and the animals. So it is not an us and them. It is not a dogma. It is not a right or wrong. It is about, can we do better? And, and is there information out there that can help you lead a better, healthier and happier life. And that's what I want to support. Um, the information is there. The, the science finally is really starting to snowball. Uh, the information, the support, and now uh, as well, the, the business community. So there are jobs, there are businesses available for people who want to um, align themselves as well, in no matter what level of transition. And I applaud every step of the way, you know, I turned vegan in one day. <laughs> I actually quit smoking, quit drinking, quit doing drugs all in one day. What a day. <laughs> quit eating all the animals. What a day. Wow. Yes, it was, a, it was a big change in my life. The light bulb went on and my heart just expanded all the way out and I did wow. not want to harm myself, the planet or animals ever again. That's not the way most people go about this. And whatever yeah. step you're taking to be healthier, to be more compassionate to extend your circle to include other people, uh, other animals. Um, and, uh, you know, I applaud, I applaud every step of the way you do. They're taking positive steps, whether it's just getting a little healthier, working out in the gym a little more often, taking walks, small steps matter. I heard one scientific uh, study saying that just walking 10 minutes a day could add two to three years to your life. And that's quality life. It's not just quantity life. That's living better life. And that's what I want for you. So this is not about, you know, oh, you're wrong or right. This is about can we all improve the world that we live in and make it a better place for everyone. So. And whenever have you seen in time that doing the right thing for you has this enormous ripple effect of also doing the right thing for other people, the planet, your wallet, and animals. It's it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> when you check all the boxes, that's when My you know. My gosh. Okay, there must yeah. Be <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Loved having you on here. Loved our conversation. Uh, I hope we have more because you have such a great information. Please do check out uh, both uh, Plant Based Business Hour and uh, Veg Economist. Um, and I look forward to speaking to you again. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for all you do. Bye, everybody.